Step two, making link level entanglement. So now we will begin by considering two neighboring nodes in a network and see how we can establish entanglement between these nodes. Uh, a, a usual way how to do that is in the following scenario. These blue boxes, they represent our network nodes. So we've got one node over here and one node over here. And each of these nodes is holding qu uh, quantum memory. What this is, here it's represented by these little atoms. And these are specialized quantum memories that can store any arbitrary state of a qubit. And in here, in the middle, what we have is something known as Bell State uh, Analyzer, or BSA for short. And uh, this, this, um, uh, this setup is referred to as MIM, or Memory Interference Memory, and we will see why. So how can the uh, network nodes establish entangled uh, pairs between each other? So what happens is that these atoms can be made to generate, uh, emit a photon. This atom over here, so the photon is represented by the yellow circle, and this atom over here, this quantum memory over there. And if we have two qubits or two quantum memories, both of them can be made to uh, generate and emit uh, photons. These photons are then collected into these fibers that lead uh, to the BSA that's found in the middle. Furthermore, these photons can, emit, can be emitted in such a way that they are entangled with their quantum memories. So here, the entanglement is represented by the squiggly line. So this bottom memory is entangled with the second photon, and the top memory is entangled with the first photon. And similarly, on the right side with the uh, other um, our uh, neighboring uh, network node. So these photons are then traveling down the fiber. And we said in the previous lesson that no matter how good our fibers are, there is always going to be some attenuation in the fibers, meaning that there is always a probability that we're going to lose some photons. And that's what uh, also happens here. So in this particular case, we are considering that we lost the first photon on the left and the first photon on the right meaning that the entanglement that was between the photon and the uh, quantum memory sitting in the network node has also been destroyed. But let's assume that the second photon from the left and second photon from the right actually make it all the way to the middle point where they meet in the Bell State Analyzer. What happens there is a Bell State measurement. If the photons arrive at the same time, they are indistinguishable and depending on the details of which detectors here click, we can say that we obtained some Bell state uh, of the photons. That projects the photons onto one of these states, and by that it also projects these quantum memories onto one of the Bell pairs, depending on the outcome of the measurement in the Bell state analyzer. So this way what we can do is we can establish a link level entanglement between the quantum memory in this, in this node and the quantum memory uh, in the node on the right-hand side. We will see the details, mathematical details of exactly why and how this works in the next step, where we consider um, uh, using this method to establish entanglement between uh, far separated uh, network nodes. Another method of uh, establishing entanglement is also a direct memory-to-memory where maybe the distance between the quantum memories is not so large, or the fiber is very, very good with very low attenuation levels, then we can just directly send the photons all the way uh, to the memory here. But still, we need some uh, method of uh, performing a Bell state measurement, so we assume that the Bell state analyzer is included in the network node.